Welcome to Tech Talk Central. Glad you could join us. Today we're doing a head-to-head -head look at two uh, pretty compelling new laptops, both integrating that AI co-pilot stuff we're hearing so much about. That's right. We're looking at the HP Omnibook Ultra Flip and the Dell XPS 14. I'm Nathan. And I'm Sarah. We basically got the listings right here, and we're going to try and unpack the key features and, you know, the differences. Yeah, the goal today is really to give you a clear picture of what each machine actually offers, help you cut through all the tech specs. Exactly. So we'll look at um, displays, processors, memory, storage. Graphics, definitely graphics. Yeah. And how that whole AI co-pilot thing fits in. See which one might, you know, be the better fit, depending on what you need. All right, let's dive in. Where should we start? How about the displays? Good call. Okay, so the HP Omnibook Ultra Flip, what's it got? It's packing a 14-inch 3K OLED touchscreen. Uh, 3K is 2880 by 1800 pixels, so really sharp. OLED, that means amazing colors and blacks, right? Absolutely. Plus, it's got a 120 hertz refresh rate, which makes everything look super smooth. Scrolling, video, you name it. Nice. What else? It also supports display HDR 600, so it gets nice and bright. 500 nits brightness is listed, and it hits 100% of the DCI-P3 color gamut. That's yeah. great for, like, creative work. Okay, that sounds pretty premium. How does the Dell XPS 14 compare on the screen front? So the Dell has a slightly larger screen, 14.5 inches. It's an FHD Plus display. FHD Plus, so 1920 by 1200. Still good, but not quite that 3K level. Right. It's Dell's Infinity Edge design, meaning super thin bezels, which looks great, but it's not a touch screen. Ah, uh, okay. Big difference there. Yeah. It also has 500 nits brightness, same as the HP. So the main takeaway, HP gives you that higher res OLED touchscreen, faster refresh rate, wider color. Dell gives you slightly more screen real estate, but it's non-touch and lower resolution. Gotcha. All right, let's talk about the brain's processors. The HP lists an Intel Core Ultra 9, uh, the 288V model. Yeah, an 8-core chip. And they specifically highlight its NPU performance up to 48 NPU peak TOPS. NPU, Neural Processing Unit. So that's geared towards AI tasks. Seems like it, yeah. That TOPS figure measures AI processing power. Now, the Dell XPS 14, it comes with an Intel Core Ultra 7, the 155H. Okay, Ultra 7. How many cores on that one? That one's got 16 cores, clock speed listed from 3.8 gigahertz up to 4.8 gigahertz. Hmm, interesting contrast. The HP pushing NPU performance with fewer cores, yeah. the Dell packing more traditional cores. Exactly. So, you know, if your work really leverages those specific AI functions that run well on an NPU, the HP might be faster for those. But for general multitasking, running lots of apps, maybe heavier stuff that uses all cores, the Dell 16 cores could pull ahead. That's probably the idea, yeah. Depends on the workload. Okay, memory and storage. This is often a big one. HP Omnibook. Comes with 32 gigs of DDR5 SDRAM. And storage, a huge four terabyte SSD. Four terabytes. Wow, that's a lot. Okay. And the Dell. The Dell XPS 14 also has 32 gigs of RAM, but it's LPDDR5X. It's running faster at 6,400 MPs. LPDDR5X is generally quicker and more power efficient too. Ah, okay. So potentially faster memory on the Dell. What about storage? The Dell comes with a one terabyte M.2 PCIe NVMe storage, but well, it's a quarter of the size of the HP's drive. Right. So key difference. Yeah. Both have plenty of RAM, 32 gigs, but HP gives you massive storage. Dell gives you potentially faster RAM, but less storage space. Pretty much sums it up. 1TB is fine for many, but if you need tons of local space, the HP is way ahead there. Definitely. Okay, graphics. This could be another major split. HP Omnibook. It's using integrated Intel Arc graphics, so it shares system memory. Right. Standard for thin laptops, usually. Yeah. And the Dell. Here's where the Dell makes a big move. It has a dedicated NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4050. Oh, wow. An RTX 4050. Yep, with 6 gigs of its own GDDR6 video memory running at 30 watts. Okay, that's not even close then, is it? Okay. The Dell is going to be significantly better for anything graphically demanding. Absolutely. Gaming, video editing, 3D work. The dedicated RTX 4050 in the Dell just blows the integrated Intel Arc graphics out of the water. So if graphics power is important, the Dell is the clear choice there. Mm -hmm. The HP's integrated graphics are fine for everyday stuff, but not heavy lifting. Couldn't have said it better. Now, this AI Copilot thing, both are flagged as AI PCs. Dell even mentions a dedicated Copilot key. Yeah, that little key suggests they really want you using Copilot easily. And the Dell listing actually gives some specifics on its AI features. Oh, like what? It talks about an intelligent webcam and audio, 
things like um, reducing background noise automatically, making the picture clearer and low light. Okay, practical stuff for calls. Yeah, and AI-powered focus to keep you centered, background blur or concealment, and even gaze adjustment. So it tries to make it look like you're making eye contact, even if you're looking away slightly. Huh, interesting. Those sound genuinely useful, especially now. Mm. What about the HP's AI features? The HP listing mentions a 9 megapixel IR AI privacy camera and Poly Studio Audio. Poly Studio is known for good audio processing, like noise canceling. And the AI privacy camera. Mm. Maybe facial recognition, login, presence detection. That, probably things like that, yeah. But Dell's listing is just a bit more explicit about the AI enhancements for communication, you know. Got it. Okay, let's run through some other notable features. The HP Omnibook Ultra Flip. The flip means it's a two-in-one, right? Correct. You can use it like a laptop or flip the screen around into a tablet or tent mode. More versatile. What else is it? Backlit keyboard, fingerprint reader, Bluetooth 5.4, that 9MP IR camera we mentioned, the Poly Studio Audio, and apparently it comes with a three-in-one USB cable. Okay. And the Dell XPS 14. Not a two-in-one, but what are its highlights? It's got an FHD 1080p webcam, which is decent, a really nice touchpad setup, multi-touch precision pad with haptics, and it's seamless glass. Feels very premium. Well, tech touch really nice. Yeah. Also, a backlit keyboard, fingerprint reader, and the power button, killer Wi-Fi 6E for fast wireless. Killer Wi-Fi is usually pretty good. Right. Multiple Thunderbolt 4 ports. Those are super versatile and fast. And a micro SD card reader. Plus, you can get it in platinum or graphite. So HP flexibility with the 2-in-1, Dell premium feel, maybe better connectivity with Thunderbolt 4 and Wi-Fi 6E. That seems like a fair summary. How about size and weight? Good point. Portability matters. The HP Omnibook Ultra Flip listing says 2.97 pounds. And the Dell XPS 14 is heavier at 3.7 pounds. So the HP is noticeably lighter, almost three quarters of a pound lighter. And dimensions. HP is slightly thinner too. Uh, 0.59 inches versus 0.71 inches for the Dell. Okay, so HP wins on pure portability. Seems so. Then there's the operating system. HP comes with Windows 11 Home. And the Dell? The Dell XPS 14 ships with Windows 11 Pro. Pro version. <laughs> they wow. usually add some business-focused features, right? Huh. Like BitLocker encryption, remote desktop, domain join. Exactly. More management and security stuff that IT departments often like, or power users. Okay. Now, reviews. Did we see any for the HP? The listing we checked didn't have any custom reviews yet for the Omnibook. It might be too new. Right. And the Dell XPS 14. That one had a few reviews, 12 global ratings, averaging 4.9 out of 5 stars. So very positive, although not a huge sample size. What were people liking? They mentioned the screen being beautiful despite being FHD+, and powerful performance in a small package. Okay, good feedback for the Dell. Lastly, the crucial part, price and availability. The HP Omnibook Ultra Flip was listed at $2,199, and it said only 10 left in stock orders soon. Okay, premium price, limited stock. The Dell XPS 14. Listed slightly lower for a new one, $2,059. But even more limited stock, only one left in stock. Wow. Though there was also a used option mentioned for the Dell at $1,699. Ah, interesting. So. Both are definitely premium, maybe hard to get hold of right now. The Dell is slightly cheaper new and has that used option potentially. Seems about right. High demand for these new AI PCs perhaps. Okay, so wrapping this up, as you've heard, both the HP Omnibook Ultra Flip and the Dell XPS 14 are, well, pretty serious contenders with this AI co-pilot stuff built in. Yeah, the HP really stands out with that gorgeous OLED touchscreen, the sheer amount of storage that 4TB is huge, and of course, the two-in-one flexibility. Definitely. But then the Dell comes back strong with that dedicated NVIDIA graphics card, which is a massive plus for certain users. And those specific AI features for the webcam and audio seem quite polished. Plus, you get Windows 11 Pro out of the box. So it really boils down to your priorities, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Is the absolute best display quality and maximum local storage the key? Or maybe the two-in-one form factor? That points towards the HP. Or is dedicated graphics power for gaming or creative work non-negotiable? Are those slick AI communication features a big draw? Do you need Windows Pro? Then, well, the Dell looks more appealing. Tough choice, really. Both look like solid machines. For sure. Hopefully breaking down the specs like this helps you figure out which trade-offs make sense for you. To find the latest prices and deals, because they do seem to change and stock is low, uh, be sure to check out the links we've put in the description below. Yeah, definitely check those out. 
And hey, if you found this deep dive helpful, we'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel, Tech Talk Central. We do breakdowns like this all the time. Yep, more tech analysis coming your way. Thanks for tuning in.